Okay, I'd like to make some comments about exam two. Sorry, I just hit the tripod. And hopefully this records correctly. I'm going to make some comments about right answers and then maybe also some comments about where the information was located because sometimes people will write down comments on their exam like where did this come from I always like those comments because then it makes me think did I say that did we have that available so here we go we're going to look at uh, exam 2 question 1 and then I'm going to also make comments about what you could put in your notes for the next exam this question says or states prolapse is a term that means if I recall correctly we talked about this in one of the lectures and I don't recall which one I could look up but not many people have this had a question on that but prolapse is a term that means a body part not in its usual place now here's the Thing. If you know that's A is the right answer and you got the key after you left the exam, then in your notes when you're studying something, take this out, this statement out, and put it in your notes, written someplace. So here's a statement you could write. Prolapse is a term that means a body part is not in its usual place or usual location, period. By writing it down, by reading it, by stating it out loud, you can learn. Okay, so now we're going to go to the second question. And somebody might say, where was this at? This nerve innervates the canine diaphragm. That's the statement. Well, I located it, and maybe what I'll do is write it down over here. I saw it was in video, and maybe I'll type that out we do have video required it was in the video called lung one at about the minute marker 345 so if you look over here I'm waving to you over on the right hand side of the screen that I'm saying, hey, if you want to go see where that was, go to the video called Lung One, and then go to minute marker, three minutes, 45 seconds. And I'm going to try to highlight this now, too, so I'm, like, learning here. So what I'm saying is, the answer is the phrenic nerve. So now in your notes, apart from this exam, you could put the phrenic nerve innervates the canine diaphragm. Don't let it lie on a page. Go and write it down. And the other thing is, in that same video, when it was talking about the phrenic nerve, it did use the word innervate, because I think somebody had the question of, what does innervate mean? And for those that are looking at it, I'm over here now. I noticed that innervate was a term that was used in the same video, Lung 1, but probably at the 4 minute 20 second marker. So when you say innervate, that means giving a nerve supply to something. Let's go to number 3 make sure my marking is right this process expels newly synthesized hormones from the intracellular space into the extracellular space that means from inside cells to outside cells someplace and I don't have the exact reference exactly where it was but I know it was stated exocytosis okay so I'm just trying to give you right answers and then you could write down in your notes exocytosis is a pr 
process that expels newly synthesized hormones from intracellular space into the extracellular space. Okay, let's go to number four. The amino acid tryptophan is the precursor molecule for blank synthesis. Well, it ends up being melatonin is the correct answer. And you might say, where in the heck did that come from? And I'm going to get my little thing here and write down. If you want to see where that came from, I wrote down, it came from the video called Endo 3. That's Endocrinology 3. And then about the minute marker, 7 and 12 seconds. So let me make that a little clear. If you're wondering where in the heck did we learn this, go to the Endocrinology 3 video that we assigned. Go to the 7 minute marker, 12 seconds, and it will say, I think there's a chart or a little diagram, not a chart, but a diagram that does that. Okay, well then we have the equine pineal gland is famous for producing. Well, anyway, let me see, make sure I got my right thing here. <clears throat> Melatonin. If you look at all those other choices, no, the pineal gland does not make white blood cells. The pineal gland does not make red blood cells. It doesn't make platelets, doesn't make insulin-like growth factors, and it doesn't make growth hormone. Six, low levels of oxygen can be termed, well, low, maybe something starts out with hypo. Well, the right answer is C, hypoxia. Look at the hypo in there, and oxia. If you look at other choices, like A, for example, that's low levels of volume. Hyper, that doesn't mean make sense. Hyper over here doesn't make sense. Hypoplasia, that means low growth. Hypertension, that's high blood pressure. So six really, hopefully it was pretty straightforward. Number seven, some people had a question on what does the epiglottis do? Where did that come from? Well, lo and behold, let me look at the, show you the right answer first. Select the function of the epiglottis in the cat. Well, it's this cartilaginous material structure, maybe I should say, at the back of the mouth, and it's B. It seals off the trachea when the cat swallows food. Okay? So the epiglottis seals off the trachea because you don't want food going down the windpipe. And I know, let me see if I get my text here going. I'll write that over here. I know that occurred in the reading that was called Lungs 1. <clears throat> so if you go to the Lungs 1, not sure if I can. Oh, I guess it's it will move. It's really up to this one right here. Okay, let me do it right here. Lungs one. About the middle of that page, talks about the function of the epiglottis. Now we're at the last question of that page. Something is a neurohormone released by the blank. Well, you can go through these. Well. Okay, first of all, growth hormone is not made by the pineal. Insulin is not made by the posterior pituitary. Thyro thyroxin, not the pancreas. Serin, adrenal, no. Thyroxin, anterior pituitary, no. Basically, the only one that kind of makes sense is oxytocin 
and maybe I didn't have my thing right here. Let's see. Get highlighted in yellow. Oxytocin is a neural hormone released by the posterior pituitary gland. That's the correct answer. Okay, now we're moving on to question nine. It says, one neat property of pulmonary surfactant is that it is well, I'll write this down later, but in Lungs 2 video, at the minute marker 15, 26, 26 seconds, it says that is surfactant is directly microbial, antimicrobial, sorry. So let me put that over here, Lungs 2 video. And then the minute marker is 15, 26 seconds. That's what this is saying over here. And I know I can move that around a little bit. Okay, so in your notes, let's say you got that one wrong. Then write down this statement. You would write one property. You could write down one neat property, whatever, of pulmonary surfactant is that it is directly antimicrobial. Even if you got it wrong, you should learn from the past exams because remember we make the, or not make, but use the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the upcoming exam is on the most recent material since the last exam, but 20% can be, can be from anything. Okay, let's go on. Um, let's see. Get my marker right here. This chemical keeps helps keep the alveolus open and ready for inspiration. Well, that's surfactant when we talk about the alveolus. Let's look at the wrong answers. <clears throat> Lymph would not be found in the alveolus. Heparinized saline is something you would make, but you would never normally find it in the alveolus. Saline is something you would make. Right? Remember, 0.9% sodium chloride. Serum would never be found in the alveolus. And plasma would never be found in the alveolus. Okay, this refers, this next question, question 11, refers to a dog we had in class. When a dog has eyes that differ in color from each other, you know, the left eye is different color than the right, the iris, of course, this is termed, well, we said in class, heterochromy, heterochromia. So I guess that would be in your notes someplace. I'm not going to give you a date. You, you can look it up. Uh... Hetero is a prefix meaning different, and chromia means color, different color. All the other choices are fall way below that. Then we got the next one here. Relative to the canine head only, what is the antonym of caudal? Well, this term canine could be replaced by any of the animals we do. Canine feline, equine, bovine, whatever. The kicker is I, sometimes I bring those terms in because it's some that I used in class. Um, sometimes you have to be careful because some of the terms we use really only refer to one species. But in this case, relative to the canine head only, so really it's relative to the head only, what is the antonym of caudal? Caudal is going back towards the back of the body. And when you're in the head, the only right answer here is rostral. Rostral is meaning towards the nares. So that's number 12. And probably that was in one of our lectures. I don't exactly remember where that comes from. A lot of these 
things, and it has to come either from lecture, reading, or videos. 13. Select the proper recipe for 3 liters of physiological saline. Well, we said physiological saline was 0 0.9 grams of sodium chloride per 100 grams of water. So then that would mean 9 grams of sodium chloride per liter of water. We have three liters, so something there's got to be a 27 in the right answer. So let's look. And it looks like 27 B answer B. 27 grams sodium chloride in three liters of water. Because I know there's nine grams sodium chloride in one liter. Right? So if you remember there's 0 0.9 grams in 100 liters, oh, 100 grams, sorry. Then you multiply that out, that's 9 grams per 1 liter, so 3 liters would be 27 grams. Congenital, that's, we often talk about this. It's in the reading, it's in the notes. Congenital is a term that means present at birth. Could be genetic, could be something that happened in utero. I'm not, yeah, I know the other day we said teratogens. Teratogens are factors that affect the fetus or the embryo. And if something's born with a certain condition, you could say it is congenital. 15. Calcium is the chemical needed for proper blood clotting in the cat. I'm not sure exactly where that comes from, but it's been stated in the lecture and probably in some of the videos as well. 16 people had a question about that. The medial anatomical plane can also be referred to as the blank plane. Look in your notes from February 6th. Remember my, or I should say, Coach Rochelle keeps notes on everything we do in class and in, in her notes from February 6th she had that the medial plane can also be referred to as the mid sagittal plane. Okay I'm ready to explain question 17 it says pyometria, pyometra, sorry, is a term that means something. Well, it ends up being, I know from the notes from January 30th. So, like, if you're trying to figure out where this stuff comes from, look at your class notes from January 30th. And it means that the there is pus in the uterus so let's say you got it wrong well then in your notes someplace your extra notes let's put it that way write down the statement pyometria is a term that means pus in the uterus okay and then you can go on from there the notes january 30th definitely Okay, question 18. As people age, this endocrine gland likes to collect, or you could say retain, calcium. Well, maybe I can type this out, but if you look at the video called Endocrinology 3 or Endo 3, well, lo and behold, at the minute marker 9, 15 seconds, it actually shows a picture of a human pineal collecting calcium. Somebody had a question on that, like, where did this come from? And again, I'm not going to say where everything came from, but when there was a question or it's straightforward to find, I will do it. The blank, now I'm on to 19, the blank is the main inspiratory muscle in the diaphragm, in the dog, hopefully, 
Let me get my marker right. Hopefully you got that. The diaphragm, sorry, not the Maximus, but I'm just trying to point out here. <laughs> Let me go on and do that. <clears throat> the right answer is diaphragm only. So in your notes, if you didn't get that right, you could write down the diaphragm is the main inspiratory muscle in the dog. 20, question 20. This is an arterial, this is an artery, sorry, that carries deoxygenated blood. Well, most arteries carry oxygenated blood, so we're looking for something weird here. It ends up being when the blood leaves the right heart, it goes into the pulmonary artery, and that's definitely very deoxygenated. It's coming back from the body. So here is the one artery in the body that leaves the heart, but it's carrying deoxygenated blood. Well, then, question 21, something in the bronchi and bronchioles help expel debris from the feline pulmonary system. What ends up being cilia. Cilia are beating, and it's part of this thing we call the mucociliary escalator. They're going to help expel debris from the cat pulmonary system. Then 22, people had questions on this. Remember, when you take your test, feel always free to write comments in the margins of the answer sheet. And this was probably one where we had the most questions. And so, neurosecretory cells of the equine hypothalamus. Let's go through the possible answers. A, function only at the time of puberty. Well, that's not a good answer. Release steroids. Nothing in the hypothalamus releases steroids. C, this is pretty good. Release hormones from their axonal end. That's probably the one I'm going to pick, but let's go down here travel in the bloodstream and grow within bone marrow. That's kind of nonsensical. Hypothalamus does not release melatonin. And then something about does not function till the animal reaches 15 years of age. No. So here we go. Neurosecretory cells of the equine hypothalamus release hormones from their axonal end because all these cells are neurons. And let me type in where this is found. If you want to go to the Endo 4 video, and then the mile, not the mile marker, but the minute marker is 1130. So 11 minutes and 30 seconds into that video, you could see the answer. That says refers to neurosecretory cells release hormones. <coughs> Excuse me from their axonal end. Okay, select the term that means erythrocyte breakup. Well, this has happened from long ago, probably exam one or almost on day one or two of the course. Breakup, blood breakup, red blood cell breakup, hemolysis. You can say hemolysis. Usually, most people pronounce it. Hemolysis. Then, this last question on this page at least, a blood volume of 1387 cc's equal how many mils? Well, hopefully you remember that it's a one-to-one -one relationship. So it's got to be the answer 1387. 1387 cc's equal 1387 mils. Okay, we're ready to do question 25 on exam two. The canine adrenal gland is located. Well, if you look at all those, and we did some anatomy in some of the lessons, and again, I'm not gonna specifically say where that was, but the answer is near the cranial pole of the kidney. Histology is a term that means, and we've said that so many times, 
study of tissue. Now this one is interesting. This liver produced protein helps to retain fluid within the entire feline vascular system. If you look back at the first exam, I think it was the first question that referred to albumin. Albumin is the liver produced protein that helps to retain fluid within the entire feline vascular system. So now if you didn't get that right in your notes and your study notes, you could write down this this phrase. Albumin is the liver produced protein that helps to retain fluid within the entire feline vascular system. Now 28 is interesting, the one false statement. So that means you've got to look through all of them and see which one you think is false. Well, A is correct, so it's not false. The cat has polycythemia, its hematocrit is going to be above normal. The alveolus is the functional unit of the canine lungs, yes. Ambient air contains 21% 20, oxygen, correct. The diaphragm is a thin sheet of muscle that helps birds breathe. Now that brings up, oops, sorry, let me get rid of one of those. <laughs> there it is. The diaphragm doesn't exist in birds. Birds do not have a diaphragm. And so then let's go on to E. The, di the pituitary gland does not produce steroids. That's correct. And then the anterior pituitary gland produces growth hormone. That's correct. So D is the false statement. 29. In the horse, this transport mechanism moves oxygen from the alveolar lumen to the red blood cell. We stated that so many times. Diffusion. And that's kind of a problem because if that diffusion barrier gets too thick, we don't get oxygen into the blood. Okay, the normal gestation length of rabbits. Yes, that's an interesting question. And hopefully you got that one right. I'm going to move on. I'll let you look that up. 31, this blood vessel carries, and I guess we talked about, somebody talked about rabbits and how they had rabbits. This blood vessel carries blood away from the left ventricle. While the left ventricle is the most powerful one, it carries oxygenated blood, aorta. Carries blood away from the left ventricle. 32, ADH, we had that in one of the videos at least, and it's antidiuretic hormone. Antidiuretic, like it's against making urine. So it tends to conserve water in the body. Now this one, intercostal, I cannot remember. I want to say that was in a lecture where we were talking about respiration and how birds, for example, don't have a diaphragm. And I think I said something like, well, the birds don't have a diaphragm, so they rely on other muscles. And one of the muscle groups they rely on are the intercostal muscles. And this would be muscles found between the ribs, intercostal. Okay, then, 34, cellular respiration takes place in the blank inside every living cell. And the one, and I, I can't remember exactly where that was from, but it's the answer is mitochondria. It might have been in the reading if I remember right. So cellular respiration in the dog takes place in the mitochondria. And then somebody did point out I had two answers the same. Notice that? Ribosomes here and ribosomes there. It's a typo of mine. If ribosomes would have been the right answer, you could have, you know, done either and got the right answer. But it ends up being mitochondria is the place where respir cellular respir respiration takes place. Thank you.